Hello everyone, my name is James, and today we're going to build this cutting board. I would like to start by thanking all of my patrons over at Patreon, and of course all of my viewers. So this project is built from basically a bunch of scrap pieces of lumber, offcuts and uh, cabinet doors I had to take apart that were of no general use otherwise. Almost everybody has a stack of offcuts and boards in their shop that they can turn into a cutting board. These make great gifts, and this is a project that's extremely easy. There's only about an hour total build time in a project like this. And here's what I came up with today, a stack of walnut offcuts. I've, I've probably got enough to make 10 more of these, but we're just going to build one today. After cross-cutting everything to length, I think I cut everything to about 21 or 22 inches. Uh, then I'm going to rip it down to a width that is basically as thin as my, uh, my thinnest piece, which I think was about an inch and a half wide. You might even be able to see here, some of these have a polyurethane finish already on them. They were from some kitchen cabinets I built that came from the doors that I accidentally built the wrong size. I cut the doors apart and I saved these things. I figured, you know, one day I could use them. Some of the pieces were really rough on one side and I had to joint them down before I could rip them to width. Instead of having the cutting board all one color, I decided to put some accent colors in it. This is maple here. If you decide to make a thin cut like this, uh, a bandsaw is a good choice. If you want to use a table saw, you can do that as long as you're comfortable with the cut. You're going to need something like this micro jig in order to make that happen though. Something that can safely grip a thin piece of wood on the other side of the blade. And this board is Wenge. I thought this would be a nice addition to the cutting board as well. If you get a tool, a push block like this micro jig uh, gripper, they have an attachment to it which will allow you to grip boards uh, between the fence and the blade. Uh, I think standard is a quarter inch and you can buy this little thin green attachment I have here on it which lets you go down to about an eighth of an inch. Microjig does not sponsor me, I just happen to like their tool, uh, but I will put a link in the description in case you're interested. And this is my second youngest daughter, Kavita. Uh, she's joining us in the shop today. This is actually going to be her cutting board, so she's going to lay out the boards for us in a, in a pleasing pattern. And of course my youngest, Sai, the photobomber there, she had to get into that scene. Looks like they're wearing the same shirt today as well. And my middle daughter there, Maya, on the left. Okay, so it looks like she's come up with a pretty good pattern here. Uh, we we pre-planned a couple of different things, and this is what uh, she liked. Uh, it doesn't take much to accent a cutting board, just uh, a couple of stripes of something of a different color. And it really makes a big difference in the overall look of the board. Now we've got to head back over to the jointer and I've got to get some of that polyurethane finish off that was on these used pieces that came from a cabinet door. And since it's Kavita's uh, project, we're going to make her do most of the work today. Once that's done, it's time for the glue up, and I guess if you use as much glue as we do, it takes three people to accomplish that. Yeah, 
And this is the quickest, easiest way to glue up a cutting board or any project that takes a lot of glue. Uh, I set the boards up the way I want to see them in the clamps. Uh, then we just kind of lay them down flat one at a time, uh, apply the glue, roll it out, brush it out, whatever you need to do, and then you can stack them right back up. It's best to kind of keep them sort of straight here. Uh, it's not super critical, I suppose, because we did cut everything an inch or so longer than what we actually need our final length to be. But if you keep them straight, that helps. Uh, a glue up this size will really have to be done in two steps. You can't really spread all of them out on the clamps. So we spread out half, glue them, put them back together. Then we'll slide that half back and spread out the other half, uh, glue it, and then we put the whole thing together and clamp it. And there you have it. Uh, lots and lots of glue. That's the only way to put one of these together. Um, I also wanted to mention that Tight Bond 3 is the very best glue that you can use for a cutting board. It has the highest bonding strength and it is the most waterproof of the Tight Bond glues. I know that Tight Bond 2 says that a cutting board is a recommended use, but since Tight Bond 3 is more waterproof, I always choose that. In fact, for all of my projects, I use Tight Bond 3. A lot of people ask me why I choose Tight Bond 3 over the other two, and there's three reasons actually. Uh, firstly, it has the highest viscosity, which means it runs a little bit less. It also has the longest open time, so I've got more time for glue ups, and it has the highest bond strength of the three. And you can see here, in addition to lots of glue, I like to use lots of clamps. Uh, it's very important to squeeze all of the excess glue out. Uh, when you're clamping these things together, that gives you the highest strength. So I don't usually bother trying to clean the glue off when gluing up big projects like cutting boards. I just wait till it's all dried, uh, set up, and then I use a paint scraper and scrape the bulk of the glue off, not even all of it here, because a couple of light p passes in the planer will take it off fully. Using a planer has another benefit. Uh, basically, when I do the glue up, I don't have to be so concerned if the boards are all the exact same height during the glue up, as long as I can clean them up at the end with a planer. If you don't have a planer, then you want to get the boards as flat as you can during glue up, so that all you'll need to do is sand the surface. So a lot of clamps and a lot of clamping pressure sometimes puts a little bit of a dent on the edge of the wood, so I like to joint that off before I continue. And then it's time to cross cut the piece to exact length. Uh, what I'll just use my chop saw for this, but what I will do is I will cut it very, very slowly. If it's cut very slowly, you can see that the cut is crisp and clean, as long as you have a sharp blade, of course. Uh, the faster you make a chop saw cut or a compound miter saw cut, the rougher and uh, it is and the more splinters that it has. But if you make the cut very slowly, you can see the cut is very clean. You've probably seen cutting boards with a groove around the top. I think in the industry they call that a juice groove and my daughter Kavita wanted that, so we decided to put that in. Uh, the bit that I'm using here is called a core box router bit. It's basically just a half circle, and it cuts that groove like that. I will put a link to one of those in the description in case that's something you're interested in looking at. And we just have the stop set up on either side. I'll slowly lower the board over the cutter at the stop on one side and I will move it over until I hit the stop at the other side and lift it up slowly. That way we have a nice clean cut. We also decided to put a 3 8 inch radius round over around the edge of the cutting board. Uh, this can also be done with a handheld router. It doesn't need to be on a router table. I just put it there because that's what's most convenient for me. Uh, and I think this adds a nice feature to the board. Mm -hmm. 
And if the juice groove didn't uh, come out exactly perfect with your routing, you can typically uh, hand sand that into shape. And then I'll just sand the whole outside surface of the board uh, all the way down to about 220 grit before I apply the oil finish. The edges I'm just going to knock down by hand. I wanted to leave them square, but I didn't want them sharp. And there's a preview of what it looks like uh, rough before any finish goes on it. I think the next step is we're going to put some rubber feet on the bottom of it so it doesn't slide around. Uh, we have to pre-drill the holes for the feet. And you can get these feet at just about any hardware store or big box store. And I'll put a link to those in the description too. I think it cost about $2 for a pack of four. Uh, but one thing that is important is they just come with regular screws. They're called bumpers. Regular screws are not good enough for a cutting board. So you need to spend a couple of dollars and buy a pack of stainless steel screws. Uh, that way they'll never rust or corrode since it's going to be in a wet environment. And for the finish we are just going to use mineral oil. So we'll do a few coats of food safe mineral oil until no more will absorb in and we'll come back with a coat of mineral oil and beeswax at the end to condition the board and that wraps up the project.